Kathy here from Kathy's Sweet Creations. So first off, I want to apologize that I didn't even talk about what the second qu uh, quilt block that we were going to make when we were going to do that flag. I didn't even do like an introduction telling anybody. I just jumped right into it. So now, today is my birthday. I'm not going to tell you how old I am. <laughs> but this is the book that we are taking our ideals from to make my story quilt that's what I'm calling it my story quilt and so to represent my birthday I'm making the cupcake block now the one thing I don't think that I said because I can't recall if I said or not is that in this book specifically if you follow these block sizes they are all six inches and you can tell that I'm not following them so I'm just doing it my own size but this is what the cupcake block looks like when you're done right there and this is how we put it together, like that. So you can make it any size that you want to, whatever size background square you want to make. And as you can tell, I think you can tell it, that the flag is a little bit wider than the My Story block. It's not as tall, but it is a little bit wider because I'm going to be putting strips between that when we get it built, when we're going to make it, okay? And they can, even the strips might not even be the same size. In other words, I won't be using a two and a half inch strip down each side to connect all the blocks on the bottom. That's not what I'm going to do this time around. This is going to be totally different. And this is the way that you guys want to make it because it's your actual story. Or if you're making one for a child, like maybe your grandchild or maybe your daughter or your son, then it's their story and you would be doing it, the blocks and everything, based on their likes or dislikes or things like that. Whatever you want to point out in your quilt. So let me go ahead and get started. I'm going to uh, stop the video here, pick out some fabrics. And okay, so let me show you where I'm at. So the first thing I did was I actually drew everything on this piece of paper. So I've erased a bunch of it off. So I... If you can see my pencil very faintly right here, I went above that, tried to go about a quarter inch to make it bigger. And you can see where I had the lines for the bottom. So I made it bigger. And then I went ahead and made this a little bit bigger. And then this is the uh, light on top of the candle. So then what I did was after I erased the bottom of that, I recreated the bottom of the cupcake. So I'm gonna cut these out. And then I'm going to take my fabric, which I have chosen pink for the icing and I like chocolate cake so I have brown for the bottom because you know when you use a paper cupcake um, those little paper things and you put your chocolate vanilla lemon you can actually see through them so that's why the bottom is going to be chocolate and then the top is going to be pink I like blue for my icing but really my background fabric it's right here and I didn't think blue would look good on that. Now the brown and the pink look pretty good. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut out my pieces first out of these. Because that's what my templates are. Okay. And you can use anything. And then I'm going to put them on my paper. But keeping in mind, I have to have a stabilizer of some sort because this fabric. Now remember, I'm going to be applique but I want to do embroidery around my applique but this is just cotton so that'll have puckers and everything in it so let me show you what I'm going to use for my stabilizer and it's something new I haven't used yet but it's leave-in wash away stabilizer sheets and as you can see here it's used for machine embroidery but it works for foundation piecing English paper piecing applique in place of the copy or the freezer paper you can cut it to any size that you need you can even print on it if you want so if I'd had this cupcake in my computer I could just went ahead and printed it on out right on that st stabilizer okay so this is what I'm going to do and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to first I'm going to cut these out then I'm going to cut my fabric out and then I'm going to show you how I'm going to position it on my fabric Okay, so here's what I use for the fusible, and I'm going to show you. I cut a piece based on my, let me show you my icing. So my icing looks like this, and I put it on top of that. I cut the fusible out. I've laid the fusible down on the fabric. I flipped it upside down, and then all I'm doing is pressing because I want the glue 
to come off and adhere to the fabric. This is double sided now. So it's not sticky on the other side. So it's not going to be sticking to my ironing board. It's only sticky to the side of the fabric. All right. So I'll peel this paper off. If you can look, see how you can see the yellow lines. So when I peel this paper off, this piece will stick to the cupcake, which is on the background. Okay. So now what I do is now that I have this, I'm going to cut this piece out. Let me show you. I have my fa small fabric scissors and all I'm doing is I'm going to cut it out. I'm not touching the paper, so I'm not going to ruin my scissors here. I used regular uh, scissors. I have actual scissors for paper. I've got a whole bunch of them set aside. Just kind of go on the outline so I know where it's at. So here's the size that I need. Now I take my template here. I'm going to lay it on here, and I'm going to hold this while I cut it. So I just hold on to it. You can pin it. And all I do is just take it like this. Let me make sure I'm in the camera here. And just cut it. I mean, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is the icing on it. And just go all the way around it till I have the whole thing cut out. All right, so here it's all cut out. The top part is the smaller part. This is the bigger part that goes down on the bottom of the cupcake. And now I can do the cup. So I can disregard this. And then just bring my fabric over, repeat the same thing with this brown. So I just take my cupcake and put it on there so I can make it so that the paper ridges go up and down or the paper ridges go sideways. My icing is going to go over the top of that, like that. See that? It'll all look nice once it comes together. So I think I'm going to, normally when you look at the cupcake, the little cake themselves are up and down like that. So I think this is where I'm going to put that. So I've got a piece of this cut out already. All I gotta do is take the paper off and then this is all sticky, which you can see that how it's shiny right there. Put it on the back side of the paper now. Don't boo-boo and put it on the front side. You gotta put it on the back. Just put it up here at the corner. I smooth it down a little bit. Take it and slowly iron it. Just want that glue to adhere. I'm barely, I barely have it over there. I just, if I let go, my iron comes up because it's one of those automatic lifts. You can test it to see if it's working and it has, let go. has it stuck to there? Yes, it has. And then I know that that fits there. So I take it and I'm going to go ahead and cut this out first, just like I did before. And that stabilizer I showed you at the very beginning, that is so that when I get ready to attach this, to my background piece because normally if I just took this and attached it when you go to sew it because this is where your embroidery comes in whenever you sew it to adhere it it's all going to hit this paper that means that it hits this paper which is fine for stabilizer but it has no stabilizer on this piece that's the piece that would be your background fabric and you can't have that so then I just take it like this it fits on there and I'll hold it and cut it out just like it did before Alrighty, here Same. we go. I've got it all cut out. There's the bottom of the cupcake. Now let's go ahead and lay it out on our fabric. I'm going to put this about in the, a little bit down because I've got a candle that I want to put on it. And I'm not sure if anything I'm putting on the outer side. Candle is in white and the little flame I went ahead and put in yellow. And then what I'll do is before I lay it down, you look at your pieces and you say what's on the bottom. So this is on the bottom. So that has to be the very first piece that you put down. So you take it and you can either tear this off or score it, however it'll come off. I think I can get mine started with my finger now. And then it leaves the sticky, if we're lucky. It should leave the sticky on there. Did it leave it? I can't tell. Yes, it did. I can feel the stickiness. So let's see if you can see a little bit of the sticky. I don't think you can. But yes, it, you can tell since it's sticking on my hand here. And then I lay it down wherever I want it. I want it here at the bottom. Just like that. Okay. This is going to go on top. But I don't want to push it all down because this has got to go underneath that. So let me go ahead and take this paper off. Just like that. And I can feel that sticky right there. So I put the 
top one like this. And I'm overlapping just a little bit. Then I'm going to take my candle. And when I said that you could score it, if you did not know what that meant, you take a pen and go downward and it rips right there. And then that would lift up. See if that lifts up for you so that you can take that paper off. If you can't get your, if you don't have a fingernail and you can't get it up underneath there, that's scoring. And now that I got this in place and I know where it goes, I can pick this up, put my candle underneath there, just like that, lay it down, go ahead and smooth it all out, and then go ahead, let me see if I can get this apart, which is the flame. Now, of course, if you're making this for like a niece or a nephew or, you know, a little toddler that's two years old, one, three, whatever, then you can put as many candles as you want on the cake. And there you go. That's it. It is all sitting there until we sew it. So I will go ahead and I'll do, I can do a satin stitch. I can do a fancy stitch. It doesn't make any difference, but I'll go all the way around it. I'll probably do this in the brown, come back and put pink on, but I'll do my white and then go over the pink last because what you want to do is if your color has to go over another color, put the bottom color on first and you can come to the edge. You don't have to be right up against the fabric here in order to put my, bl my brown or black, whichever color I want to use. I can start in about an eighth of an inch and start there and do it. And it doesn't even have to be a fancy stitch. You can do a straight stitch all the way around and then do this part fancy and do these straight stitch. So it's whatever you want. And right now, since I don't have it ironed on, I can pick it up and readjust it like that was a little bit crooked to me like that. And as long as you haven't ironed it, you can pick it up, fix it, put it back down, pick it up, fix it, put it back down. So if I like where it's located and I do, it looks good, then I'm going to leave it like that. And then I will put the iron down. And my paper that I talked to you about, leave in wash away. Let me get a piece of that out so you can take a look at it and I'll show it to you. Okay. So it looks just like this. It has nothing in the way of stickiness. So that's not going to stick on the fabric. All you're going to do when you get ready to sew is you lay it like this on your machine and then pin this to this and you can use straight pins, safety pin, whatever, or you can spray an adhesive and attach it. So now it's on there and then you do all your embroidery work around it. And then when you're done, leave it on and it can come out with the wash or you can spray it with water and take it out or you can put your square in a bucket of water i mean a pan of water not a bucket but whatever you want to do all right so now i'm going to go ahead and i'm just gonna i like where it's located and everything so i'm just going to hold my iron on it and just move it around and then the glue from the other side makes it adhere to my background and that's it this is my birthday cake or my actually my cupcake and then if you want the month and the year and all that, but I don't want to do that right now. I'm not even thinking about it. I mean, I could put June and I could put 16 over here or whatever, but I'm just wanting to put this on and that's it. I haven't decided that far okay, out. So what I've done is I went ahead and I have a piece of fabric here and it's just two pieces of fabric folded together. So it's going to be big enough to work. It's strictly to practice my stitches on. So I'm going to do the um, top of the candle first, so the, the light. And I didn't know what to use. I went ahead and I put some yellow thread in. Now this is embroidery thread on the top, which is a polyester. The bottom has polyester also. I have a 12 inch needle, needle in here. And I have a thing on my, on my sewing machine that is called a stem stitch. And it looks like a teeny weeny zigzag except it goes to the left, but when it comes back to the right, it is about a third of the size of stitch that goes to the left. Okay, so let me kind of draw that on a piece of paper for those that don't know what I'm saying or think I don't know what I'm saying. Stitch comes down, and when it comes down, instead of doing this, which is what a zigzag is, okay, until you change that stitch. Uh, size on the width this one comes down and then does this and then comes down and then does this and then comes down but I'm exaggerating for the size of it so this is the stem st stitch 
So it comes down and it just goes over a little bit and then down a little bit. So let me show you that I did it on my fabric here so you can see it. See that? So that's what I'm going to go around the little wick. Now all I've done is pinned. I took two straight pins and I put them up at the top. This way these pins won't stick me because they're going away from me. And then I'm just going to put this here. Now I don't start at the top of it. I go ahead and come in a little bit. But I'm going off of the piece of fabric here. Now this is just my regular foot. I can use an open toed foot if I didn't want to use this one. But that's fine. I don't think I'm going to have a problem with it. So I've come off of, so I'm off of the fabric here, and then I'm going to have the stitch go on it and off of it and on and off of it, like a zigzag. And then I can actually do a back stitch here, and it just locks it into place. And I'll see if this is too big or too small. I don't think it is. But since I'm going around this, it's sort of like a circle, I've got to really kind of pay attention and slowly move it. And you might not have this stitch, but a zigzag or a satin stitch will work just as well. I mean, I might not like this, and I might decide to go ahead and do a satin stitch. I don't know. We're going to take a look at it here in a minute. Let's take a look at it. Okay, it's not too bad. It almost does look like a satin stitch. See that? And now I'm going to change my thread because I want a white for this. Alrighty, so instead of using white, I'm going to use this as sort of a gold color. You can see it a little bit. And uh, let me show you. I'm not sure if y'all want to see what kind of thread. This is actually rayon, not polyester. I thought it was polyester, but that's, that's what this is. Now when I put this in, instead of putting it in upright like this, in my machine I go this way so that when the threads come off they come off easier but the difference is instead of going this way when it comes off I literally turn it backwards and have it come off of this end and I make sure that I use this here which is bigger than that so it doesn't catch along any of the bottom if there's any kind of ridges and that's how I'm setting it up on my sewing machine that doesn't mean that you have to do it on yours that way but it comes off better because it comes off around the bottom so that's the way I'm doing it on my machine but you do whatever you feel comfortable with, or if your machine has specific directions, then you use those. So for this, I'm just going to use a plain straight stitch. I'm not doing anything fancy for this candle. And I'm going to start at the bottom and work our way up, and then I won't have to take it out or in or anything. And this is such a light gold, I don't know how much it's going to be noticeable. Now this is going to put a little bit of a buildup of glue on your needle, which you can probably see it right here on my needle. Alcohol will take that off real easy. And I'll show you what I mean by me telling you that this color really looks good with it. So look at that color right there. See, that almost looked white. And now I want to do the brown. Now I'm not changing my bobbin when I change this. Okay, keep that in mind. I'm only changing the top fabric, the color. So I have a couple of browns here, so I'll lay my fabric, my thread on the fabric and see which one I feel is the better brown. Here's another brown. And I think that this second one is a lot better because it totally blends in. So let me change it out to that one. Okay, so what I've decided to use for this is my quilting applique stitch. I have my width on a 2.5 and my length on a 1.2. Now, when I'm making this for my quilt, you can actually take a square that you like out of this and just repeat it and make it your own. And you can make these small or large or whatever. I'm trying to make them all different sizes so that I can show you how to make a quilt that doesn't have the exact same amount of uh, squares or I mean not necessarily the exact same amount of squares but the exact same uh, size so this is just going to be a little bit different I know I've said that before always good to learn a little bit different stuff something new and I'll show you what I've done with it what it looks like and then I'm going to go ahead and do 
I'm not going to do anything across the top since I'm going to be doing the pink all the way around. It'll catch the bottom of the candle and it'll catch the top of the cupcake. Okay, so I'm going to do the zigzag satin stitch. So I've taken my length all the way down to a 0.3. My width is 3.0 and I'm going to keep my foot lined up in the middle of this right here as I go along. And then it'll be on both sides correctly. So that's what I'm going to try to do. And yes, I did a little practice sheet. And if you've got a cupcake design that is pieced and not applique, you could use it too. It doesn't have to be applique. I just like the applique one. I have never done it before. Okay, so I did not catch all that, so I'm gonna go back over it. I went too wide for some reason. Here I missed a whole piece too, so I've gotta redo it over there. So I'm actually gonna go down there and do it. So let, first what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to pull my needle up. I'm going to put it in a straight stitch. Now remember my width was three and my length was 0.3. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock it into place right here. And then it got skimmed right here and skimmed right there. So I'm going to go back over to here. I could do one of two things. I could actually lock it into place or go ahead and zigzag it. And I would prefer to zigzag it. And I like to, when it goes in the same spot, what I like to do is do it a couple of times to lock it into place. Before we take a look at it, I wanted to show you how I actually have my thread. Normally that would be turned around, but I like the way it comes off the back better. I mean, you consider it reverse or whatever. But if it had come off of one of these, it would have tangled. So this is better when it comes off the way that it's draped on here. Here is our cupcake. And there's the stitching. And see how the difference of the stitchings are? There's the satin stitch. And then we're gonna flip it over and look at the back side of our paper. And when you get done doing your blocks, would you please put them up on the Facebook so that everybody can see them? And then if you want, you know, you can cut most of this off so it doesn't have as much to be washed off. But I don't want to cut any off yet because I'm not sure if I'm going to write June and my year or just the month of June and the date 16 or what I want to do. So I'm going to leave that paper on there. And I'm going to go ahead and probably leave it pinned, but I'm going to, and these pins are small enough, but they're not going to have a, a issue with them. And then I'm going to put it up here on the board behind me so that you guys can look at it. So let me go ahead and close this video. So I want to thank everybody for watching this video. I really appreciate it following me along, whether you're doing it or not. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. So take care, everybody. Bye-bye. See you next time.